feel that? It's another man-made earthquake. They're actually quite common, thanks to our penchant for drilling, mining, and otherwise messing about with the subsurface. The most recent proof comes from Spain in 2011. An earthquake that measured 5.1 on the Richter scale leveled a town and killed nine people. It may seem hard to believe, but thirsty Spanish farms caused that quake. Here's how. An earthquake most commonly occurs when the earth moves along a fault line, either dropping away, thrusting up, or slipping side to side. In the case of Spain's earthquake, fault shifts of just a few centimeters unleashed devastation. Those shifts were caused by removing the pressure formerly exerted by underground water. Farmers using the water for irrigation had dropped the water table by as much as 250 meters. That missing water caused the quake. The Spanish quake is not an outlier. Earthquakes rattled normally quiescent Ohio last year, which scientists linked to pumping wastewater from fracking underground. Similarly, typical oil and gas extraction has set off minor quakes from California to Oklahoma and Illinois. Of course, the oil and gas industry aren't the only ones to blame. The city of Basel in Switzerland experienced a man-made quake in 2007 thanks to attempts to harvest geothermal power. The developers were pumping water deep underground to fracture rock, but the pressure also set off a local fault. And the weight of water behind new dams in places like western China has triggered a string of earthquakes. The massive pools of water behind these dams push down on the ground, putting extra pressure on any active faults. Such water weight may have played a role in the devastating 2008 Tembler that killed tens of thousands of people. Some suspect even climate change will exacerbate earthquakes. After all, as heavy glaciers melt, the land beneath rebounds, and that can set off rumblings. Earthquakes are among the most catastrophic natural disasters, both in terms of lives lost and property damaged. There is currently no way to predict when they will strike, but we should at least try to avoid making the problem worse. For Scientific American's Instant Egghead, I'm David Biello.